agree to what you're saying about if I'm doing it, it's like I took a decision. If I'm not doing anything, I didn't do anything. It's, it, there is no a decision. But I think it's related to the fact that people find it really hard to change, especially when there are so many unknowns. So uh, nobody could promise you anything when you're starting this kind of a journey as, a, as an organization. And uh, just thinking differently and trying things differently and growing your mind into to being like open-minded to a new thing needs your energy and uh, need to, you need to be very you need to stand up to resistance in many cases mm -hmm. right uh, i guess that you will not be as welcomed as um, thinking about a new strategy of doing uh, more money in a different market as you've done till now right and uh, i think that it demands from you to be a bit different from others within your, in the sea level, in the management, wherever you are. And, um, and when you're different, it's, it's risky for you to think differently and to be different and to, people don't like it. No, no, no. It, 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 I, I completely agree with you, right? And it's no, no CEO has ever been fired because they hired McKinsey or BCG or Bain to run kind of the, stra the standard strategy project, right? They, they're doing what they've always done and they're doing something with kind of a, general stamp of approval of this is something that works you're not going to make any any miss any kind of short-term mistakes with that right if you want to be if you want to be a bit more brave that's different and people you will be in a position where people point the finger at you and say what did you do that like this was a mistake um, um and um and that's yeah that's i guess a a problem a general problem of how we kind of think about risks and think about the outcome of risky projects in that we only ever judge them by the outcome and don't judge them by kind of the possibilities of the realms of uh, realms of possibilities and the decision at the point when it was made right but 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 generally speaking yeah you're right what we need is what every company needs is a very positive leader leader that is willing to take uh, to take certain risks and not um, uh, and not just hide behind what's always been done yeah yeah, I think it's related to culture too, because, you know, I talked to an entrepreneur from Germany, you know, it like much better than me, right? And he said that he, he did some kind of like a really successful startup. And then um, he needed like uh, to do something financially with banks, I don't know, like getting lots of loans. I, I don't remember exactly. But in the end, it, it, it couldn't pull it off, like till the end. Mm. And, and, you know, it was very successful, but you know, it didn't work out as he wanted. And he says that the the price for failing as they see it, it's, it's a failure for them. I don't see it as a failure, but many of the people that work with him saw it as a failure. And he was, he said that he, the price was so substantial, like really, like for him, it was, was like people st stopped talking to him. He couldn't like find a new position. It was like, totally you shouldn't do it and once you paid this kind of price and everybody knows that this is a, the usual price you will not be willing to try it all again and you see less entrepreneur less people taking risks less people being brave especially if you're in an owner organization and then you know um you you're you're really paying a very high price for it no, 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 and this is this is interesting. I mean, it is indeed a cultural point, and this is probably the reason why most unicorns these days don't come out of Germany, right? And don't even come out of Europe. They they come out of the US a lot. When where if you started a startup and you failed, good on you. You've tried. Well done. In Germany, you're a loser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you use this word, but you're right. <laughs> right. And uh, yeah. and that's probably not uh, not the right way of, of thinking about it. No. Yeah, I think that um, when we're thinking about what is really losing and what is really winning, uh, it seems that these days the fact that you're trying and learning is not less important than the fact that you've done things in the past and you have the knowledge and then it's much easier for you to do again another mm -hmm. win. And you mm -hmm. when what you learn is, is things that you didn't know before, right? Because you learned mm -hmm. a new thing. And it always reminds me of what Thomas Edison said. It's not that I failed. I found 10,000 ways that doesn't work. So <laughs> it's like, it's exactly that. So if you're failing, I guess that means that next time 
you will be much better. And, and many of the entrepreneurs who are successful in building unicorns, it's not their first venture. It's not their first startup, right? So, exactly. so in order to get better, you need to fail and learn. And maybe in your third startup, it will be a unicorn. Most of the times yeah. it's not your first, it could be, but most of the time it's not your first one. And this, it's another way of seeing long, long term and seeing life. That yeah, for the short run, you could be um, you know a manager within a company that is doing much like you have the 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 salary, you have the you know all the respect that you get to be there, but uh, you, you're not learning as much if if you would have been an entrepreneur and taking your knowledge from all these years and doing something different, and therefore mm -hmm. it's really hard for I know that Europe is really struggling to find these people and to make them grow and and many of them trying to to open these labs it could be like from the government it could be from within companies it could be in industries in academia they're trying to do that and it's so much harder for them just to have these kinds of minds and open and creativity and open-mindedness and, and bravery even willing to take the risk it's hard when you need to pay this loser you know here stamp on you when no. you're not doing absolutely so how absolutely. yeah so, so I, i'm curious to see when you know like you know more more countries in europe than than i do for sure do you see a big difference when you're coming right now you're talking to me from 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 my london so do you see a difference when you're talking to people in london than in germany uh, i think so i think i think london is probably somewhere um, or the UK, generally speaking, is somewhere between the US and Germany on that scale of um, of how much um, uh, one is appreciated for trying versus how much one is ostracized for for failing. Right? It, it's it's somewhere in between, um, but it's definitely it's definitely on neither end of the of the extremes. Um, yeah, I don't know much about the the kind of uh, the culture around failure in. Um, in other parts of Europe, to be honest, but I think I think the UK is quite quite firmly in the middle, as it is in in, in quite a few things between the US and Germany or yeah. Europe. Yeah. So let's go back to what we talked about the COVID crisis. So how do you see when you talk to these people in corporates? How do you see corporate innovation affected by the COVID crisis? Mm. So I, th I think it's a mixed bag, but I think overall probably, and it's. Um, I feel bad attaching anything positive to um, to this horrible pandemic, but um, but overall, it's probably been uh, been been a wake up call for a lot of corporates that uh, that put innovation now higher on the agenda than it was before. And not only the kind of corporates themselves, but also investors. I think there have been quite a few interesting BCG studies over the last year uh, about investor sentiment and how investors feel about prioritizing the long term over the short term now and investing in innovation now. Um, rather than saving money, and those have been, uh, yeah, those have been thoroughly positive from the investor side in terms of let's let's think about the long term, let's think about um, innovation and so on, which hadn't been the case before, and it, which is, which is quite novel because you generally would think of investors as quite short termist. I think, of course, yeah. some companies are just fighting for survival now, and for some companies, budgets have been slashed, and um, um, and and I know a few organizations where. Yeah, where the whole innovation teams have um, have basically been cut, but I think overall and mostly um, in the long term, this will have a this will have a positive effect on the importance of, of innovation to corporates. Okay, we're almost done. I have my last question. So, what is the most surprising thing that you learned about innovation from your years of experience? Um, I think there's a. There's maybe if, let me reiterate some of the a few of the things I said earlier. I think one of the things is is really that finding that came out of our study that I mentioned that that actually even long term innovation projects that don't show up on the P and L within a couple of years, but are really the long term projects where you invest, 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 and then only reap the benefits years later. Investors appreciate those uh, approaches, and stock market returns show that even early on in those uh, in those long term journeys. And um, that is something that stock markets appreciate, and uh, and your um, your stock market performance will reflect that. So the the myth that corporate innovation has to fail because of the short termism of um, of companies is actually is actually not quite there. 
that might often be the reason, but it doesn't have to be the reason because um, because actually the stock market appreciates long-term innovation projects more than one thinks. The other thing maybe is that is is just is just the importance of governance, right? Um, getting governance structure right is probably the most fundamental and most important thing if you think about successful corporate innovation, especially if you think about if you think about venture building, if you think about doing something that really doesn't come natural to uh, to long established organizations and shielding those innovation units from the rest of the organization um, uh, in the right way and managing it in the right way is one of the biggest success factors and i think i'd underestimated the importance of that a little bit before i entered the industry